Hello everybody, it's SID Medhaven here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Object 277. We're not going to be doing a review on it because True Sight is still going on. Light tanks still have abysmal, or <laughs> tremendous, camouflage ratings. So, this match that I'm going to be showing is a two-mark match. This is my second mark for my Object 277. The Object 277 in this game right now is probably my number one tank. I just love this tank you have decent haul armor it's not the thickest at all in any regards whatsoever but the turret handles very well with your gun depression your gun depression actually maxes out inside this tank at 5.5 degrees so we'll go in deeper detail later in the future for this tank but for now let's take a look at this replay we are on a bay a bay's got a lot of areas that you can go to. There's a lot of just straight fights. Heavy armor is always your best bet. If you're in a light or a medium, going down the right side of the map or even the middle can be extremely helpful depending on what type of medium you're in. Now, starting off, I looked at this match and I, I thought to myself, you know, kind of want to hit the right side seeing what kind of armor we have. So the chisel, the E50M, T57, we don't have a lot of super heavy tanks. The enemy team has two E50Ms, which turret armor is still very weak on the E50M. So, you know, just standard shells straight through the front. A little bit excited for whenever they decide to buff those tanks. And right off the bat, I'm just going to be looking around, seeing who's going to the right. Because depending on how many people go there will depend if I fall back or if I decide to try and hold the back line rather than playing aggressive. So far, everything's looking pretty good. we got a pretty healthy amount of tanks heading right. There's only four of us to start off, but time slowly goes on. We get a couple more guys to team up with us and head over. And in this replay, um, keep an eye on how I move in my tank and the just the overall knowledge of my armor. This is something that if a tank you a tank that you like, learn your angles. Learn them as much as you can because in every single fight that comes up, it's it's going to make a huge difference. So knowing that my hall armor is weak and there's a dead KV2 right in front of us, we're just going to use them. And we're not going to poke out and expose any of our hall. We're going to give them our side armor because we have thick side armor and spaced armor. Kicking back, I uh, was thinking to myself, ooh, I forgot what arteries they have. So they have a bad chat autoloader, and then they have the British Tier 9. Still has a big derp gun, and it hurts. So, now that I know that, just trying to keep track of everything that's going on. And, well, these E50Ms were trying to get the artillery to take shots at us, but for some reason, it took artillery a long time to aim over this way. Now, when you're inside of a heavy tank, it's not all about trying to be fast and get in and get a position. Sometimes you just want to stay calm and hold yourself where you are. You don't want to try and play aggressive right off the bat. Saving your hit points is always top priority. Taking a risky move, yes, performing a risk can be totally fine. You know, it's like you're halfway through a match and you're still at full health and the enemies. I've got a couple of hit points. So right there, right off the bat, the KV-1 that was right in front of us just took a shot from artillery. Lucky for us, we had a immortal object in front of us that stopped the shell from doing any splash damage at all. And right off the bat, easy little snapshot into that T-95E6 turret. Those hatches are huge and weak. So, straight through it. Easy shot. And he's coming back for round two. 520. The 490 alpha on the Object 277 is really nice as well. Especially with that under 10 second reload at 9.89. Trying to go for the hatch and, well, shot went a little bit too low. Kind of wish I saved my shell for that E50M. And then watching the first round come... 
now I'm just like, you know what, we're, we're not dealing with Artie, we're just going to back up right here. And flip back around, which, honestly, great choice, and of true vision, watch this, right off the bat, there we go, we already saw the Valor before he's even coming around that corner. Overmatching his top armor with our 130mm gun. And I, I, he, he was probably trying to side scrape us, but he was over angled way too much. You know, the spaced armor on the Valor, it, it's good spaced armor, but it's not meant for side scraping. It's meant to be an absorption or basically flat scraping. And flat scraping is whenever you don't do any angle whatsoever. You just back up from a corner and rely on your side armor just to auto ricochet. The Valor, on the other hand, is still a very good tank. Compared to PC, they de debuff the top plate when they introduced it to console. So if he doesn't have any gun depression and he's just flat on, 0 degrees, and you're 0 degrees too, you can overmatch that front plate. But the second that he gets 3 degrees or 4 degrees of gun depression, that top plate becomes almost impenetrable. Now, seeing both Arties... You know, taking them out, especially in tier 10, you always want to try and take out the artillery as fast as you can. And... Where'd it go? <laughs> now, now that I'm actually watching over the replay, um, let, let's jump back just a tad bit. So, right here, I'm aiming in, and my first mistake. My gun is not lined up with the hull, it's lined up with the turret. So whenever I fired... My shell went over the back of the turret. So whenever you're trying to shoot somebody on the move, make sure you're always leading the hull, not the turret. But our second round goes through for 489, making him back off. He does not want to get hit again. It is all, it, it's almost a guaranteed one hit if he stays. Now down to a 4v5. So I'm looking at my map and I'm thinking to myself, all right. I am by myself over here, and there's a super conk. I'm spotted. Let's just find a spot, hold down. Hopefully the E4 will team up with us. But he's a greenie. He didn't want to team up. So starting off, I'm sitting here thinking maybe I got better view range. No, no, I do not. <laughs> I am running a gun rammer, vertical stabilizers, and improved ventilation, along with a premium consumable for the additional reload, repair time, etc., etc., But at the right angle, going through the bushes, he overexposed himself a tad bit, and we were able to spot him out. So now we know he's staying in the same spot. So I tried making a call out to this chisel on our team. That's full health, extremely healthy. And a lot of the enemy tanks have been hit hard. And the advantage is the true sight here. Just parked up against a rock and just keeping an eye out up above. Someone tries to rush me on the right side, I'm going to know it. But I'm looking at my map and I see three tanks all the way over there. There's just basically one artillery and a heavy tank. So I decided, you know what, we're going to flip around and we're going to head out. So rather than exposing myself on the side where I can be spotted, I decided to drop down the hill instead. So I don't have to drive out in the open. Now there, we got two enemies on the base, and I was thinking to myself, there, I, I feel like they're gonna cap out. So, the play I decided to make was, let's go get spotted. Let's show them how healthy we are, because a lot of people are greedy in this game, and the only thing they care about is their damage standing. And 490 alpha on my gun, he has 490 hit points, and oh, just shy of all of his health. 15 left. That that was a sad moment, because I can't go around that corner without getting rushed by mediums. And I'd rather be able to see the mediums out in the open than getting caught inside of a cluster area with a lot of air like there's on that right side there's a lot of cover and mediums have a lot of an advantage but i should have went there because of how many hit points i have compared to their mediums so our oe4 decided to jump down and ooh, there goes the machine 
just kills himself driving right off a cliff. Now, I'm spotted, but I don't mind it. I know that a lot of the enemies are very low health, two shots, maybe even one shot. So, rather than risking it and rushing, I'm just going to expose myself, let them know where I am, and the E-50 just did not care. He, he wants to go kill that OE-4. So, putting a round in, I'm flipping back around because the OE-4, I was kind of hoping he would get it. You know, 395 standard penetration and a premium round pen of 375, but he gets outmatched by the tier 10 medium British. Now, I'm loading high explosives just to try and hit the hatch, do a little bit of splash damage, and I hit the corpse in front of him. And there's the artillery that I failed to kill. 15 hit points. Oh, not a good trade on my part. Now we're down to a 1v4. And there, there's only so much you can do, especially whenever you're getting hit by multiple angles. So the first thing that came to mind was I need to get out of there. I need to drop down somewhere that they're going to have to be a little bit aggressive to come get me. And this was the position I thought about. Straight down into the gully, into the water. And originally I was thinking that the medium was going to try and come up behind me. You know, because if I just pull forward a tad bit, if he doesn't come up behind me, he's going to have a lot more problems trying to hit me. And now that I saw him there, and ooh, look, Super Conk. Super Conk's coming in trying to get the damage. He did get some damage, but taken out of the match. Ooh. You know, a lot of the reflections, they need to dim those down. Those are blinding. Especially those uh, new Hot Wheels tanks. They are metallic. And oh boy, are they metallic. Get the sunlight on those and suddenly you can't see. Now, loading a premium shell. And number two. And rather than backing up... I, I should have continued forward, but I was a little bit worried about artillery because I got spotted out. And the building to my left, I, I knew that could stop a shot. And without thinking, the medium gets on my side. And now I'm trying to just readjust and give him an angle that's hard to go through. And Well, he's above, I'm down low, straight through the top plate, no angle. Artillery hits me in the back of the turret. Either way, I would have been dead. But... You know what? That was a second mark match for 4,937 full damage and assisted for 616. So, in my eyes, that was a win-win for me, except for the loss. The Valor, we punished. T95E6, we punished. A couple one-shots there and Machine <laughs> straight up drove off a cliff. So, the Object 277, this has got to be probably one of my favorite tier 10s. I have a couple that I like a lot, but standalone, this tank, if I had to just choose one tank for one tier 10 to keep in my garage, I would probably choose the 277 over any other tank. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you like the gameplay. Let me know. If there's conversation potential, I will reply. And, just a heads up, later in the future I will be announcing the giveaways, so keep get ready to put down your comments and uh, I will do a little raffle. Write your names on paper, tear them up and put them in a little ball and spin it around. And we're going to do maybe two giveaways. Everyone is going to get five entries. So, whenever I write that out, it'll be five entries per person on a little piece of paper written out. Or I might just print it off and then cut them up with scissors. That might be easier. So, how it's going to work is, if I draw the same name twice, it's a Fangula. If I draw two separate names, it is two M48A2s or the newest premium tank that they release. So, you guys have a wonderful day and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow.